In this episode of Inspired Infrastructure, I'm shining a spotlight on an upcoming project that's about to make a real difference in Columbia, Missouri. My inspiration today is thanks to the U.S. Department of Transportation's Safe Streets and Roads for All program, also known as Safe Streets for All or SS4A. Safe Streets for All was created by the Biden-Harris administration as part of the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law which provides $5 billion of federal grant money over five years to our nation's communities to plan, demonstrate, and implement improvements specifically designed to prevent death and serious injury on our roadways. I recently took a look through the 2024 Implementation Grant Award winners and randomly scrolled to the City of Columbia's application for improving accessibility and equity along Clark Lane, a heavily traveled minor arterial in the northeast portion of the city. The City of Columbia is set to receive $8.4 million from SS4A to address the lack of multimodal mobility, poor lighting, inconsistent speeds, and poor access management, which are all contributing factors to fatal and serious injuries along this corridor. And I didn't immediately find any published studies or plans for this corridor, so I took a quick tour using Google Maps and Street View. The roadway today is two lanes with paved shoulders that double as bike lanes, though it's not apparent these are used too frequently as there's no separation for moving vehicles, which are likely driving faster than the posted speed of 40 miles an hour. I mean, take a look at this westbound choke point where that bike lane just immediately disappears into a second travel lane. This faded shared lane marking is just a sad attempt at establishing cyclists' intended space on the road. Today, this portion of Clark Lane is a rural cross-section, meaning instead of having curb and gutter to trap and drain stormwater runoff, the water just flows off into roadside swales. Also, there appears to be a ton of right-of-way dedicated to this road. I measured about 120 feet, so there appears to be plenty of room to widen this out and create new dedicated facilities that maintain some physical separation between road users. So without a diagram and just a brief description of this improvement, I had to take an educated guess at what a future Clark Lane would look like. I did see notes about a shared use path and lighting improvements and new curb and gutter and a lack of turn lanes. So I decided to build out a wider, more urban cross section with a center running two way left turn lane that can also serve as space for pedestrian refuge at crosswalks. Curb and gutter that will help with drainage, but also help prevent errant cars from running off the road. A roadside amenity zone with new streetlights and shade trees. And then a 10 foot wide shared use path that I figured might be best on both sides of Clark Lane. This wider but more urban road section fits well within the total right of way and provides separation for the more vulnerable people walking and biking and also should make it safer to drive here by creating dedicated space for turning vehicles. The project description also noted access management, as the reduction of driveways and side streets along Clark Lane should help with supporting more consistent, predictable travel patterns and reduce the number of crash conflict points along the corridor. So using Beyond Typical's photo compositing tool, I wanted to view this improvement from a bird's eye view and imagine what something like that could look like. And just as an example, I'm dropping in a concrete circle on the north side here to represent turning this side street into a cul-de-sac that no longer intersects with Clark, though most of these driveway openings are likely slated to get rebuilt to match the roadway. Finally, the SS4A description also noted enhancing crosswalks using pedestrian hybrid beacons. These are also known as Hawk signals, which are relatively new traffic control signals that are designed to bring more attention and priority to people crossing a street between intersections. I noticed in my street view tour that there's already a crosswalk on Clark with RRFB signalization near this gas station. So it's likely this would be a good candidate for an upgrade if these RRFBs aren't doing the trick. So back in Beyond Typicals, I built out this crosswalk with that new urban cross section, adding a pedestrian refuge island along with those hawk signals, which should make the drivers much more aware of people walking and rolling across Clark Lane here. Safe Streets for All grants are already making a huge impact across the United States. So far, the first three years of the program have already awarded more than $2.7 billion to more than 1,400 communities across the country. 
Thanks to this program, we're continuing to take steps toward a collective goal of eliminating traffic-related deaths, but there's still a lot of work left to do. For more episodes like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit inspiredinfrastructure.com.